Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Ment FX. In this specific video, I kind of wanted to take a deeper look at structure and give you guys a better way to use structure within your Wyckoff setups, within your smart money setups, and within every other concept that you have learned so far. So what you're looking at currently on the screen right here is known as Elliott Wave Theory. And to be honest, I don't use this in Forex. However, I do use it extensively in stock research and partner that with smart money order blocks, smart money structure, and smart money Wyckoff accumulations to get involved in the market for potential stocks. Now, the reason I wanted to bring your mind or at least your attention to Elliott Wave is because it actually deals with a very big and crucial part of structure and might actually explain to a lot of you why your smart money trades are seeing very little success or why your structural points in the market are not seeing um are not holding as well as you would want them to. So before we get into anything, I wanna quickly say that before my entire journey started, my whole journey really started when I joined VVS. And this was the first time I ever learned about Elliott Wave. And this guy himself, Blake, has an amazing mentorship based on fully Elliott Waves. And from there, I grew my career into understanding how to trade smart money and partnering that with normal structure. But the ideas of what he teaches concerning Elliott Wave is what actually allowed me to begin to see the market in a fractal nature significantly better than I had before. So let's get into it. Now, let's go over to a normal currency and let's go over to this white space right here so we can talk a little bit about structure and why um, a lot of you are seeing structure not hold for you the way you want it to or, for instance, not seeing the order blocks that you want hold you know, or you never know which order block is actually going to hold. So the idea of Elliott Wave and how it really works is under these conditions. It's the fact that it has three impulsive waves. It has a one wave, a two wave, a three wave, a four wave, a five wave, right? Based on three impulses and two mini retracements, resulting in this push upwards. Now, from a smart money standpoint, what we're actually seeing here is just breaks a structure higher, a reverse to some kind of order block in here, or potentially even order block in here, right? And a continuation higher. And this is only showing you just normal, um, this is just normal structure in the Forex market, for instance. And after these three impulsive waves with these two corrections occur, what you usually see is a three wave correction that comes below usually some areas in here. And as we do this, you're gonna see some very interesting things. So we usually have, um, what follows is an A, B, C retracement, just like that. Now, when this occurs, you'll also notice that structure is technically shifting. And what it's also doing is taking out liquidity that rested below these lows and intermediary lows like this one, right? Giving you that same sort of trend lines being built and that liquidity being liquidated, right? But what's interesting is when we just look at this very basic setup of what a normal structural play can look like in the Forex market, you start to see how a bullish belief can instantly switch bearish, right, with this break of structure right here, and then can actually continue to make new highs. And you wonder why something like this happens in your order blocks in these areas here, because usually when you have moves like this, you leave behind order blocks in these areas, and those order blocks usually see little to no um, mitigation. Instead of seeing something like this from an order block in these areas, instead you have a tap in, and, a, and um, instead you have a tap in, a move away and then a continuation, right? And you're wondering why your order block sell from these locations didn't work as well. Well, it's because it's based in the theory, a lot of it, at least because of Elliott and in the idea that fractals in, in the form of structure can occur back and forth, bullish and bearish within a given setup because of the number of time frames that are operating in any market. So let's go to paint very quickly. Um, let's delete what we had here. I don't know what this was. And let's outline the idea of Elliott Wave and then put that together with smart money. So the idea, like I said, is this five wave pattern to the top. So you have the zero to one, two, three to four to five. Okay, so actually let's make it a little smaller. Here you have a one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then you have a little retracement, which counts as your ABC. And the way we usually label this is a zero, one, two, um, one, two, three, four, five, followed by an A, B, A, B, C. So again, a lot of you that trade smart money and are using a lot of these concepts with Wyckoff and everything do not have to understand this um, 
in a super deep sense like Blake or like me understand it now. Instead, what you need to do is recognize what this is going to explain to you as we continue doing it. So notice this one, two, three, four, five pattern and this ABC retracement that occur here, right? The zero to one, two, three, four, five and the ABC retracement. This exact same thing actually occurs within this little box right here. Okay, so you're starting to see the idea of fractals shown in this theory, or in, in you guess you could call, call it normal structure, right? Breaks a structure, breaks a structure is continuation, potential reversals, and then maybe continuations, okay? So what you're actually gonna see inside of these areas here is this exact same thing repeat, and you're going to see a one, two, three, four, five, and then an A, B, C. Then you're gonna see a zero, one, two, three, four, five, an A, B, C, a zero, one, two, three, four, five, and A, B, C, right? Or you might see a one, two, three, four, five inside here, another A, B, C, a one, two, three, four, five, and this will then repeat and go significantly higher. But as we begin to do this, start to notice something that's very interesting about what we're seeing here. We're seeing this structure fractally distributed to each one of these moves here, right? So this move was the exact same as this move, which was the exact same as the move that occurs in here. It's just flipped ultimately, right? And as we do this, notice what happens as we begin to follow this structure, right? We have breaks of structure higher, within structural moves higher, we have breaks of structure higher, and then we have structure breaks lower, right? That structure break occurs, potentially price comes up into an order block within these areas, right? Even if you're using a fib, maybe you notice that this is that pullback and you have this move down that grabs the last bit of liquidity under this low. That low's liquidity is grabbed with this move here, right? And what happens? We come into a previous order block that lay at this prior low, right? We come into that area, mitigate it and continue higher. We put in a failed high off a mitigated order block here. And this is the example of where an order block does not actually hold. Instead, it gets mitigated and then continues higher. But that's because it's part of a larger structural move. So the reason we talk about this and actually bringing up this theory is because it's going to show a lot of you how to consider the market in a fractal nature on the basis of Wyckoff, on the basis of smart money structure, using the explanation of Elliott wave structure, okay? And now as we follow this higher, you can see the same thing happening. As we begin to print these lows here, we're actually printing what? We're printing liquidity, right? In the form of trend lines. And as we do this as well, notice what we have inside this area, right? You're already seeing the snowflake rule, a selling climax, an AR, a potential ST inside here, an ST and B or a spring, a move higher, a test, a sign of strength, a backup and a continuation higher, potentially a move back down into order blocks within that backup, which function as reaccumulations and continuous price action higher. Right. So this is the idea of the market and how it moves. And the reason it does this is, of course, based on the same notion of greed and emotion in the market. So, again, every theory or Wyckoff or Elliott can actually be explained away using things like this. But understanding price movement in this sort of sense will actually begin to have a great effect on your perception of structure in this market. So what's even more intriguing about what's going on here is that. The same way that we have this entire thing, right, that we showed you here, play out in this area, in this area, and then in this area, and again, flipped in these areas, you have the exact same thing happen even lower. So consider what this area here, right, so this whole area here would look like on a lower time frame. If we were to get to a lower time frame and zoom into potentially, let's say, a one minute or five minute chart, Right. So let's say that higher. So let's let's basically assume that the black is equivalent to maybe a daily chart. Right. So uh, excuse the bad handwriting to a daily chart. The green is equivalent to maybe a four hour or a one hour chart. Right. So let's just assume that it's a one hour chart. Right. And then the red is equivalent to, let's say, a 15 minute chart. What you'll actually see on a 15 minute, if we zoom into these same areas, is the same thing repeat. Right. Where you have a one, two, three, four, five an ABC, a one, two, three, four, five, an ABC, a um, one, two, three, four, five into an ABC, into an ABC, a one, two, three, four, five, right? And then it repeats three, four, five, ABC, one, two, three, um, let's scroll up here a little bit, three, four, five, ABC, right? And basically you can see kind of how we're, um, 
how this will continue indefinitely as so, okay? You'll have your ABC, one, two, three, four, five, and it will repeat again. Now, as we do this, notice what you're starting to see, right? As we begin to do this, you're starting to see structure get manipulated and change back and forth as we get to lower and lower time frames. But notice how as we do all this, an inside structure begins to you know shift quite heavily. If you want to think about it, there's a break of structure up here, right? We have a move down, a continuing structure, a breakdown in structure, right? A hold of this order block, a continuation lower, a break higher, this order block getting traded through, becoming a potential structure block, trading off that to come higher, trading off that to come higher, switching it again, right? Breaking structure, re-breaking structure. And soon you start to notice that structure on lower time frames has to switch back and forth between highs and lows, going bullish and bearish to still accomplish the same end goal, which is the higher time frame structure, right? So that lower 15 minute structure is actually responsible for that one hour bullish structure. Now that 15 minute shift in structure on a lower time frame is now actually responsible for that one hour shift in structure lower. So how is this all important to you as smart money traders? Well, as smart money, a lot of you understand that when we trade smart money, we look for definitive structural plays. What we do is we wait for structure to print us some kind of bullish formation right? We're honestly looking for liquidity to be grabbed and then for liquidity to continue being grabbed to the top side. And as it's doing now, what we're looking for is to expect price to come into the order blocks within these areas, give us potential wipe off and continue higher, right? Come back into those areas, give us more wipe off and continue higher. Now, what's interesting is within these moves, right? What we see is we see bullish structure, shift bearish, shift bullish, so actually let's do this. We have bullish structure, shift bearish, shift bullish, right? Remain bullish, shift bearish again, respect areas that are bearish, continue lower into those areas of Wyckoff, giving you fractal accumulations here, distributions here, accumulations here, so on and so forth until it shifts bullish again, right? And then what happens is many smart money traders are looking at this red move here, right? That lower time frame as a continuation bearish and expecting this order block to hold to give them lower prices without recognizing that this downward shift in momentum was actually for a higher time frame play. So refer back to the directional bias videos that we made and we spoke about how the higher time frame is the only thing that actually controls price and recognizing that is one of the most crucial things because the lower time frames are not what control the higher time frames. The higher time frames put the lower time frames into action and give you back and forth setups that can occur within those areas. However, overall, a bias remains. If any of you don't believe this, you can of course go back to any, um, so let's do this very quickly, to any actual chart, right? So let's actually go like this and just go to Euro USD for instance and recognize, so even on a four hour chart, how long the chart remained bullish until it really switched, right? So potentially you could argue that, let's say we had a bearish um, structure being put into play here, right? That bearish structure was all part of a longer move on a daily move, right? So all that structure there was actually part of this daily move up, daily move down to continue higher, to continue lower, to continue higher or something like that, right? So if we follow this structure on the four hour, just thinking about normal structural plays, Notice how long this bullish structure really remained on the higher time frame, right? You have this move up, this move down. You have these moves up, these moves down. These moves up, these moves down. Moves up, moves down, moves up, moves down, moves up, right? Moves down. And intermediary wise, you can see structure begins to shift bearish, but it's still overall holding bullish. Still holding bullish, still holding bullish, still holding bullish, still holding bullish, still holding, still holding until you finally have the breaks down. And now you can begin to trade within that exact same bias, as you can see. And a lot of the, and the video we just came out with was based on pretty much this ideal of expecting structure to remain somewhat bearish until we are told otherwise. A lot of smart money is understanding what your bias is and letting that bias remain validated until it is switched. The lower time frames do not control the bias that we have preset. Just because the one hour on here, right? So if we go even inside this area here, just because the one hour on this move here might have shifted bullish does not mean that this market is primed to go higher. What it means is it's shifting bullish for the short term to enact lower prices 
later potentially, right? Which might be part of that bigger reversal, which brings us to, if we go to a daily chart, for instance, which basically just brings us to, um, actually the daily might have even shifted bearish here as well, right? But it might bring us to, for instance, a weekly, right? Low, because the weekly has still not shifted from when it first broke here, as you can see, right? We have bullish, 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 bullish. And the reality is even though inside here, we are seeing hardcore bearishness, that does not paint the picture for what we can expect. Instead, what really paints the picture for what we should be expecting is the higher time frame, because the lower time frames will follow the higher and fall in line with them. And that's how we get involved the institutional way, because order flow is within a certain direction. And within that order flow, you are going to have counterparty movements, as you can see in the example we drew here, with the fact that even though this market is overall being painted bullish, that overall bullishness in the market can still be met with intermediary term bullishness and bearishness. And within that, we have more bullishness, uh, bullishness and bearishness, bullishness, bearishness, bullishness, longer term bearishness, which is all part of building a cause and liquidity to continue going higher. And that's why this theory of Elliott Wave specifically is very important and crucial to somewhat understanding in your own understanding of smart money because it directly correlates to the ideas of Wyckoff and Wyckoff playing out fractally on many time frames and seeing accumulations followed by distributions followed by a major distribution which results in a smaller accumulation down below and continuations of that sort as you remember in videos that we've looked at before the way you tie this principle um, the way you tie this same principle in with something like Wyckoff is understanding that if you have Wyckoff occur, right? So let's say we have some kind of selling climax, AR and ST and ST and B, right? A spring, a move away and this continuation higher and you have Wyckoff occur in this sense, right? So again, any of you that don't understand this, we're going to have a video come out very soon about the Wyckoff theory and how to um, enact it. But this is basically like a, a dummies version of the, of a normal um, accumulation. So here you go, right? You have a normal accumulation play out. You have your sign of strength. Potentially you have a test inside there, right? Then your LPS and your continuation higher. Now, why does it get so confusing when you're trading Wyckoff and seeing something like this? Because what you fail to remember is that within all these areas, you also have fractal things happening and new structure being printed. So even though this higher time frame makes a lot of sense, when you begin to look at it in a normal chart setting, you begin to see things of this nature play out, right? The same thing we speak about Right. And you start to imagine this is all Wyckoff, but in reality, it's all part of a larger schematic. Right. And within these same areas, you can have even lower time frame. Um, so let's actually put on like a red or something. So within those areas, you can have lower time frame schematics that play out in those areas that you can be involved in. And all of a sudden, things like this inside of these areas can begin to confuse you if you don't understand how the fractal nature of the market works. Now, as we begin to paint this picture, even right here, notice the moves that we have in here. All these moves are doing exactly what we've spoken about in the past on this channel, building liquidity in each direction in many areas, grabbing that liquidity shifting structure, grabbing that liquidity shifting structure until a major play has been put in action for us, which is why we stress the importance of when you look to get involved and do get involved in certain areas, you understand that partialing above given liquidity highs is necessary because price doesn't have to um, continue significantly higher and print profits for you, but instead it can continue lower below certain areas, right? And will stop you out or um, yeah, can stop you out if you don't manage your trades properly from a smart money perspective. So even though we don't trade this Elliott Wave way, um, or at least you guys don't, I do for stocks, does not mean that what you can learn from it isn't important, right? The idea of these fractals and the way that the market can switch back and forth between bullishness and bearishness is one of the most important and crucial elements to understanding Wyckoff and higher time frame and lower time frame confirmations and setups, right? And the same way we did all this, let's for a second go even deeper if um, any of you really want to and consider what's actually happening inside of these areas, right? So in the in a, in in reality, a one minute time frame. Okay, sorry about that. A one minute time frame inside of those areas, right? What do you imagine is happening on the one minute within these areas, right? The same thing we spoke about. On the one minute, you're going to have the same thing occur. The waves up, the waves down. The waves up, the waves down, right? And as this all occurs, these areas, if you're new to smart money and looking at these time frames 
from completely new perspective or even coming from a retail background can seem very, very hard to follow. And you can get very emotional very quickly and not recognize that maybe this structural move lower that's breaking all structures and moving lower is all just part of a of a higher bearish move that's part of an even higher bearish retracement, which is actually part of a larger bullish move up, which is going to be part of even a larger bullish move higher. So the same way that we just looked at Euro US dollar, right, with the weekly time frame, imagine these moves up as that weekly time frame. These moves up here are what is actually happening on the weekly. And right now we're looking at all these areas inside here as the four hour, one hour, and even lower charts, right? So the same way we spoke, oops, so let's get rid of all that. Um, here we go, here we go. So the same way we spoke about all the things that occurred in the last week or the last actual two days when we've been trading the FTMO um, challenge account within these areas is all part of understanding that these moves are to create liquidity, potential liquidity, and to create accumulations and distributions within these areas before meeting a, I actually wanna make this blue, before making a continued play towards a certain direction, right? Price can, of course, do a multitude of things. We are trading the footprints. We cannot be 100% sure. This distribution could end up coming to take out the lows here, which is something that I'm actually expecting it to do. It doesn't have to, right? But that's why we look for confirmation and look to partial and manage your trades along the way. This could come down here, come back up, give you a new setup, right? painting a trend line, breaking down. And at this point, you may be interested to take this order block as a sell without recognizing that overall bias has potentially been met on the higher time frame. And what might happen is you might have a move to this order block inside of here that forms, right? Because again, it's the last up candle before the down move, a move away that mitigates it, right? And then a potential reaccumulation, just like that, that continues to higher prices because those higher prices are what? Part of, if we go to the weekly, part of, a higher weekly bias, which has already been given to us. And until that bias gets invalidated, we don't have to change our minds, right? This is the idea of price shifting back and forth and understanding those shifts intraday, um, intraweek, intramonth, and having them all play in to a potential bias. That is why it's so necessary to understand what your bias is in this market and then trade that bias until that bias is invalidated. Now, as you trade that bias, your trades will not always work. And then when those trades don't work, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that your bias is wrong. That just means that a lower time frame bias has not been established within that higher time frame bias yet. And that is one of the key elements as to why smart money traders get extremely confused about which order blocks they need to use and which structural points they need to use because they forget to recognize where they are on the institutionally higher time frame and where institutional order flow really wants to head. Okay, so as you all see this thing play out right here, and again, recognize that all this, you know, is repeated over and over and over again within all of this. And then the most interesting part about what you're seeing here is that when you even think that a move is complete, right? Here's something that's absolutely phenomenal about um, why, uh, about Elliott Wave itself. And again, this plays the same way into Wyckoff, the same way you've seen in the GBP USD videos, okay? And what I mean by that is, what we'll do is we'll do this very quickly, just like this. Um, let's make this a little smaller, just like that, okay? The same way that you just saw this whole thing play out, what you can actually do is then also recognize that this is all part of actually a bigger move that is the exact same thing. And what I mean by that is that five move that you saw occur, right? So let's say that that black, like we said, was a daily chart. Now what we're saying is the purple in this case can be a monthly chart. And that, oops, and that monthly chart is part of what? The same move, the move up, the move down, the move up, the move down, the move up, the move down. And then that can repeat. So notice how a monthly bullish bias okay, is being painted by the bullish bias of a daily chart within it that is in the form of this black line, right? And within that bullish price action on the daily, we have the continuous back and forth action of the one hour or the four hour going bullish, going bearish, going bullish, going bearish, going bullish, going bearish. And within that, we have the red, which is the 15 minute going back and forth. And within that, we have the... Um, the blue, which is going back and forth, which is the one minute. And again, within that you have the seconds and this is a constant thing that happens in the market. The shifting around of bullishness and 
bullishness and bearishness in the market. Now, the same way that we view this is the same way we view Wyckoff. And the reason it's so important um, that a lot of you understand what's actually going on when I show you this is because Wyckoff does a very similar thing. And what I mean by that is that if we take a look at actual Wyckoff and notice that, you know, let's say we have a buying climax, an automatic rally, a secondary test, right? An upthrust, a UTAD, a breakdown, a test, and then a continuation lower that, you know, results in that markdown. What's actually very interesting about this move itself is that within these intra moves, you're going to have Wyckoff occur again. And what I mean by that is if we zoom in here very quickly, you'll notice that inside of here, the same way we just viewed this distribution, you'll have potentially, um, so let's actually make this even smaller, you'll have an accumulation occur, right? The test of that accumulation, a move higher. Now, as we're moving higher, you're going to have a buying climax, an automatic rally, a secondary test, an upthrust, right? Maybe a type two distribution, a snowflake rule, the breakdown, the test, there's going to be distribution here an accumulation here, this breakdown in price, right? Potentially another accumulation here, movement higher. And then, you know, all of this becomes a major accumulation, testing these areas in here, coming higher, right? coming lower potentially, coming higher. And then as we're coming to these areas up here, the final areas, we have a ton of highs being made, a UT, more highs being made, UTAD, break down, break down, come back up to test that UTAD with an order block within these areas and continue lower. Now, you can start to see how Wyckoff within here, within here, within here, and within here is actually forming the higher time frame structural plays as you see in this Wyckoff distribution that we saw here. Now, what's even more profound about something like this is that let's say we zoomed even further out. That entire um, Wyckoff distribution could have been an accumulation here, right? Can come up just like this, can come down, can come up and then have the real breakdown. And what do you start to notice? Well, you start to notice that this accumulation that had all these accumulations within it was actually part of another accumulation here. So again, sorry, this distribution was part of all these distributions in here and the accumulations within it in the red, right? This accumulation here, then this major distribution here, which formed what? Well, if we zoom out, this is its own major distribution, right? You have a potential buying climax, a potential automatic rally, an ST, an upthrust, the move lower, a test, and a continuation lower. So what's happening is that exact same idea of structure being made with intermediary structure moves within it, right? And intermediary structure moves within those is the same thing you see with Wyckoff. And understanding those two things and then partnering them when you're looking at something like a market like this and understanding that as you have Wyckoff develop, areas within that Wyckoff is also going to present more opportunities of Wyckoff at the tests in the form of... Um, there we go. In the form of the Wyckoff you see present right here, that will also give you tests of order blocks in other Wyckoff that's present within that Wyckoff, right? So I believe this was the 30 second chart. Um, we had a video made on this, check out the previous one if you haven't seen it, right? To see those same lower prices be met. And within those areas, again, you can guess the same thing. Um, if you have access to tick charts or even lower charts, you're going to see the same thing occur. So the idea of even trading swing trades or um, scalp trades is ultimately the same thing. If you want to be a four hour trader, you just have to recognize that you're going to be trading the same way you used to confirm on the lower time frames. You're just not going to be getting into as many trades. So I hope this video explained to a lot of you how structure in the market can be printed and how market structure can be delivered to you in in, in basically a back and forth way, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong, right? So even if you look at here, you have bearish structure that is then met with bullish structure, right? Which is then shifted, um, this bearish structure, which is then met with bullish structure, which then shifts into bearish structure again, which then shifts into bullish short term, which then shifts into bearish and then continues bearish for a very long time, as you can see. This understanding is the understanding that will paint a bias for you and let you get into potentially longer institutional plays because you understand that the lower time frames are not what controls the higher time frame. The higher time frame is what is basically its pinnacle and the intermediary moves within it do not matter unless you're looking to trade them because the higher time frame is always going to be respected. So by that same idea, if you were to be looking at a 15 minute chart and trading the 15 minute chart, all you should be recognizing is that within this bullish structure, 
you should be using the lower time frame to confirm this bull structure. And shifts in that bull in that structure should be met with lower time frame confirmations to see continued bearishness. And shifts in that should be met with what? Looking for continuous bullishness. Continuous, continuing bullishness. Continuing bullishness, continuing bullishness, and then an invalidation. Continuing bearishness, continuing bearishness, and so on and so forth. And it repeats. And that same movement is going to be part of a larger time frame given move. And that same movement is going to be part of an even higher time frame move. So again, I hope this video helped explain to you a little bit about how structure can very much influence the moves in this market and how understanding that structure can shift on multiple time frames will completely change when and where and at which order blocks you actually want to get involved in. So again, feel free to check out Trade Connect VVS. Great guy, amazing, um, amazing trader when it comes to stocks and Elliott Wave. And you guys can see that. And that is how Elliott Wave shaped my own perception and understanding of fractals in this market and understanding those fractals to see structure, to see Wyckoff, and to see impulsive and structural moves within those moves, right? And that is what we trade here at MetaFX and how we were how we constantly um get tons of trades back and forth within our group of course as you know we um we sent out all these trades here and you can see how we constantly are able to collapse and get involved on certain areas because we're expecting multiple moves back and forth and that is also why even when we have trades run one to 30 and one to 15 and one to 10 or even one to five or even one to 60 we are still partialing at smaller values like one to four, one to two, if that is what we want to do, because we understand that the market is fractal, because the market can print something on one time frame, but does not mean that it has to hold on another. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this made a lot of sense. I hope this um, I hope this actually has a big effect on your own understanding of structure. Let me know in the comments below if it does. And thank you all. See you guys in the next video.